Natriuretic peptides consist of atrial natriuretic peptide or ANP and brain natriuretic peptide or BNP. Both of them secreted by myocardiocytes in response to high blood volume in atria and high ventricular wall tension. The main function are natriuresis, vasodilatation and inhibition of aldosterone secretion. In atria, ANP is stored in inactive pro-NP form, which has two ends, N-terminal and C-terminal. It is released in response to increased blood volume in atria and divides into two parts. C-terminal part is active ANP and N-terminal pro-NP part is an active one. In ventricles, BNP is stored in inactive pro-BNP form and also has two terminal C and N. Pro-BNP is released in response to increased ventricular wall tension and cleaves into two parts. C-terminal fragment is active BNP and N-terminal pro-BNP is inactive one. The half-life of natriuretic peptides is the time that needed for reducing plasma peptide concentration by half. BNP half time is 22 minutes. NT pro BNP is 70 minutes. NP has a shorter half-life is only 2 minutes and NT pro NP has 60 minutes. Both NP and BNP have the same physiologic action but different half-life. And further, we will use only ANP, but remember that BNP has a similar action. Natriuretic peptides work through the natriuretic peptide receptors. There are three types of receptors, A, B and C. A and B natriuretic receptors are located on the surface of adrenal gland, vessels and kidneys. They are responsible for physiologic effects and use cyclic honazine monophosphate as a second messenger. Natriuretic peptide receptor type C is necessary for ANP degradation. Natriuretic peptides cause renin angiotensin aldosterone system inhibition. Let's quickly remind renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Low blood pressure, low salt level in renal tubule and beta adrenal stimulation activate euxaglomerular cells in kidney. and they secrete renin into the blood. The renin cleaves angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1, which is physiologically inactive. Further, angiotensin 1 converts to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin 2 acts on the adrenal cortex. Here it stimulates the release of aldosterone. Aldosterone acts in collecting tubule of the nephron with two different cells. In alpha intercalated cells, it increases activity of hydrogen ATPase that lead to hydrogen ion secretion to the urine. In principal cells, it activates sodium potassium ATPase that increases sodium reabsorption to the blood and potassium secretion to the urine. Increased level of sodium in the blood increases osmolality of the blood, leading to a shift of fluid into the blood vessel that lead to augmentation of blood volume. In the proximal convoluted tubule of kidney, angiotensin 2 acts to increase sodium hydrogen exchange work that lead to increase in sodium reabsorption too. Also, angiotensin constrict efferent arterial and glomerulus that lead to increasing pressure inside the glomerulus, thereby to increasing of glomerular filtration. Angiotensin acts on the brain. Here it has three effects. 
First, it builds to the hypothalamus, stimuli and source. That increases water intake from GI tract. Second, it stimulates the release of antidiuretic hormone by posterior pituitary. And third, antidiuretic hormone which works through the V2 receptors and act to increase water reabsorption in kidney by inserting aquaporin channels at the collecting duct. A myelarid sensitive sodium channel it is not related to renin angiotensin aldosterone system, but it is the way how sodium can enter to renal epithelium in collecting duct. Finally, the angiotensin II provides for the constriction in systemic arterioles. Here, angiotensin binds to angiotensin receptor type 1, as a result, increasing of intracellular calcium level that lead to vasoconstriction. This acts to increase total peripheral resistance. Both increasing of blood volume and total peripheral resistance cause an increasing of blood pressure. Atrial natriuretic peptide can inhibit releasing of renin from euxtaglomerular cells. It means convertation of angiotensinogen in angiotensin 1 decreases. Therefore, concentration of angiotensin 2 decreases too. This lead to inhibition of angiotensin 2 stimulated aldosterone release. That lead to decreasing concentration of hydrogen ions in urine and by blocking sodium potassium exchanger in principal cells, decrease sodium reabsorption and increase concentration of sodium in the urine, that called natriuresis. Also, ANP inhibits angiotensin stimulated sodium reabsorption in proximal convoluted tubules through the inhibition of sodium hydrogen exchanger that also lead to decreasing of sodium reabsorption and increasing of sodium concentration in the urine. Both of these effects decrease concentration of sodium in the blood, therefore they decrease osmolality of the blood, that lead to reducing of blood volume. ANP inhibits angiotensin II induced release of antidiuretic hormone from the posterior pituitary. Thus, it stimulates water diuresis by curbing effects of antidiuretic hormone on water reabsorption in the distal tubule. ANP decreases the vascular resistance by inhibition of angiotensin II induced vasoconstriction. Both lower blood volume and vasodilatation lead to decreasing of blood pressure. In the kidney, NP also block a myelarid sensitive sodium channel. That decreases entering sodium to the renal epithelium and increases sodium concentration in the urine. Natriuretic peptides act also in renal glomerulus where they increase glomerular filtration rate. Glomerulus has efferent arterial, glomerular capillary, efferent arterial, and Bowman space. Glomerular filtration rate is described by Starlin equation. Starlin equation includes filtration coefficient and algebraic sum of hydrostatic glomerular capillary pressure that push fluid away from capillary into the Bowman space and that favor filtration and has a plus sign. Hydrostatic pressure in Bowman space that has an opposite direction and has a minus psi. An oncotic pressure of glomerular capillary that also is directed into the capillary and acts to remain fluid inside the vessel, that means has a minus psi too. Together sum of hydrostatic glomerular pressure, hydrostatic Bowman space pressure and oncotic glomerular pressure form net ultrafiltration pressure. For efficient glomerular filtration, hydrostatic pressure in the capillary 
should be bigger than both hydrostatic pressure in Bowman space and oncotic pressure in capillary. Atrial natriuretic peptide stimulates the dilatation of efferent renal arterioles. Dilatations mean increasing the radius of arterioles, which is described of causal formula of vascular resistance. The formula contains viscosity, length, p, and radius in the power of 4. By this formula, increasing of arteriolar radius extremely decreases the resistance of arterial. And by formula of blood flow, which is difference of pressure divided to the vascular resistance, decreasing of resistance increases the blood flow in vessel. According to other formula of blood flow, blood flow is volume of the blood divided to the time. According to this, if the blood flow increases, volume of the blood increases too at the same unit of time. As a result, it increases hydrostatic pressure in the capillary. Increasing of hydrostatic pressure in the capillary increases net ultrafiltration pressure and therefore increases glomerular filtration rate. Also, ANP stimulates constriction of efferent renal arterial. Constriction means decreasing of efferent arterial radius, therefore by Poisel formula. It extremely increases the resistance of this arterial. According to the blood flow formula, high resistance decreases the blood flow through the vessel. Then in its turn means decreasing the amount of blood that goes through the efferent arterial at the same unit of time. So some amount of blood is restricted from leaving capillary. As a result, it increases hydrostatic pressure in the capillary that lead to increasing net ultrafiltration pressure and increased glomerular filtration rate. ANP causes relaxation of smooth muscle in arterioles and venules that lead to vasodilatation. For explaining this, let's remind key moments of smooth muscle contraction. Depolarization open voltage gated calcium channels. It increases calcium concentration inside the cell. Calcium that enter to the cell stimuli additional calcium releasing from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which called calcium-induced calcium release, whose rise of intracellular calcium is partly due to calcium entry across the sarcolimal membrane and partly due to calcium release from intracellular sarcoplasmic reticulum stores. The rise in intracellular calcium concentration causes calcium to bind calmodulin. Complex of calcium and calmodulin activates myosin light chain kinase. As a result, myosin light chain kinase phosphorylates myosin light chain. When myosin light chain is phosphorylated, it is cause actin myosin binding that lead to cross branch cycling and tension. Tension of arterial or smooth muscle means reducing radius of arterial. According to the Poisel formula, reduction of radius lead to increasing of resistance. In general, it increases total peripheral resistance. And according to the formula of mean arterial pressure, which consists of cardiac output and total peripheral resistance, if the total peripheral resistance increases, mean arterial pressure increases too. ANP acts with natriuretic peptide receptors in vessels and lead to intracellular activation of guanylate cyclase that induce the formation of cyclic guanosyl monophosphate from guanosyl 3-phosphate. High concentration of cyclic guanosyl monophosphate activates protein kinase G. Protein kinase G stimulates calcium sodium exchanger on the cell membrane. As a result, intracellular calcium level decreases. That reduces calcium calmodulin complex formation. Therefore, myosin light chain kinase remains inactivated. As a result, myosin light chain kinase doesn't phosphorylate myosin light chain. When myosin line chain is not phosphorylated, actin myosin binding not occurs and tension decreases. Decreasing of smooth muscle tension means increasing the radius of arterial. 
According to the Poisson formula, increasing the radius leads to decreasing of resistance. In general, it decreases total peripheral resistance. And according to formula of mean arterial pressure, if the total peripheral resistance decreases, mean arterial pressure decreases too. Also, NP increases capillary permeability. That leads to extravasation of fluid into the interstitium, thereby decrease of blood volume, and together with the natriuresis, an inhibition of water reabsorption on the one hand, and vasodilatation on the other hand, lead to decreasing of blood pressure. And P and BNP can be inactivated by binding with natriuretic receptors type C. That induces lysosomal natriuretic peptide degradation. Also, NP and BNP can be degraded by neprilysin, specific zinc containing and membrane bound enzyme. High intraatrial volume and high ventricle wall tension can be due to chronic heart failure. Therefore, chronic heart failure can be associated with the high level of NT pro NP, ANP, NT pro BNP, and BNP. So, it can help as a diagnostic tool if the heart failure was suspected. According to half-life of natriuretic peptides and their inactive parts, the most suitable for detection of heart failure are BNP, NT pro BNP, and NT pro NP. The upper limit for heart failure is for BNP more than 35 picogram per liter, for NT pro BNP more than 125 picogram per liter, and instead of NT pro ANP is used his remnant which called MR pro ANP. And upper limit is more than 40 picogram per liter. If you like the content, press like and subscription button. Have a good day. Here we go.